Okay, welcome to lesson 8.2, surface area of 3D objects. We're talking about rectangular prisms for now. So, a prism is basically a six-sided figure, like a Kleenex box. That's a rectangular figure. So it is made from six different rectangles. And the beauty about it is you're going to always have the relationship of a front and a back, a left and a right, and a top and a bottom. And that's how you're always going to decompose the object. So what we do is we draw one of those objects, okay? Only one. And you draw it as a 2D figure. So here they've drawn it for you. So this is how you would map out the work. So we always do front and back. So front and back, that is this part that I am now shading into you. So what is the width of that? Two, the small number, two. What is the length of that? Five, good. So I have a five by two object. Now, so over here they have two times, then we're gonna put five times two in the brackets. Now, where did this outside number two come from? Why did they put a two there? Good, it's because you have two sides, the front and the back, okay? So that's why that two on the outside is there. And it'll always be there when we're doing these uh, types of prisms. So now we're just gonna multiply five times two times two is gonna give us 20. The next one, the top and bottom. So now we're looking at this red piece the top and the bottom. So now when I have that red piece, this length is the same as this guy's length down here. So that's a three. And then the, this bottom length here is gonna be the same as that top one, five. So my numbers are five and three. So I'll put five and three where they belong. And now I do the multiplying. So it's gonna be five times three, which is 15. And then we times it by two to give us 30. And the next one. Now we have the rest of the object. The rest of the object is this little side right here. So this little black side right there that I'm shading in right now, it has a height similar to this guy, which is a two. So we've got a two by a three object, two by three. So the number two and three go in there. So two times three is six, times two more is 12. Now, in order to find my entire answer, I need to add all the numbers together. So I'm going to get 20 plus 30 plus 12, and that's going to give me 62 centimeters squared. Okay, so everybody got those down? Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Here's a couple different objects. Now, I'm just gonna get you started. I'm a, I want you guys to do letter C here, okay? I want you to do letter C exactly like the question we just did. I'll do B for you in a moment. But I'm gonna show you how to draw it out. This is what we do. You're gonna go top and bottom equals two times and then leave two brackets, length and width. Left and right, two times length times width. Front and back equals two times length times width. And that's how you will set up every question. That'll never change. Okay? So I'll get you started on that. Fill in the blanks there. And I want you to solve that question. I'll give you a couple minutes. Push pause now and play when you're ready. Okay, so you've got a couple minutes to look at this now. So take check your work. Okay, that's what I've got on the board. Yeah. Move on. <laughs> Okay, surface area composite objects. This is now putting them out into a net. So we're drawing them on a flat surface. So they draw, draw on the top, and now when they draw them like this on a dot sheet for you, all you've literally got to do is count how many squares you see, and that's your surface area. So here we've got two squares. Here we need to draw a line to make two squares. Here we have to draw a couple to make three squares. Two squares. The bottom is 2, and the back is 3. So all we have to do now is add up every single one of those, and we're going to get 14. Okay, so it is 14 centimeters cubed. Now, 
whenever they talk, uh, you too. Now, whenever they talk about one centimeter cubes, that's actually those little cubes we have in the box. What that means is the length and the width is each one centimeter. So when I try to do the area of that, one times one is one. That means the area of one face is one. That's why we're able to just count how many there are. Okay? We're not counting how many there are and then find the area of them. That's the actual area of them because they're a one by one. Okay? That's what that actually means. Okay, let's take a look at our next example. The next one, same idea, but they didn't draw everything out for us. So we have to draw the next part. So the front and back is this shaded part right here. So they're showing you, you're looking at it like this. So they're showing you where the front is. And they're going to show you three different types of shading. There's going to be a white part that's on top. There's going to be a dark shaded part. And then the light shaded part that I covered in red. So the front part is what we see here. They drew three squares. So we get two times three. Why did I multiply it by two, guys? Because it's squared. Not quite. Because there's a front and a back. So front and back. They only drew one of them. That's why I have to multiply it by two. Okay. The top and bottom. Now the top and bottom looks like an L. So we have this situation. Hopefully you draw better than I do. A three and a one. Kind of like a little boot. So we have two sides and how many squares are there? How many squares are on the top and bottom? Four squares on the top. Now we're going to do the right and left side. So if I were to look at it from this side like this, okay? So everybody take a look. I'm looking at how many squares are dark shaded. Two squares are dark shaded. So we're going to draw both those squares. So this one is going to have two times two. Remember, this first two tells us the number of sides. Okay, that's the number of sides we're considering for the question. The number in the um, brackets is the number of the actual boxes that are one by one. So 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4. If we add them all up, we're going to get 18 centimeters squared. Well, let's take a look at the bottom one. Number 3. They didn't draw any of it for us on number 3. Okay, I'll just let you finish number 1 there. Or number two, I should say. All right, the front and back. Well, they're showing us we're looking at it from the front this way. So how many squares can I see from the front view? Three. Take a look at how many are shaded the same color. Three. three, good. So I can see three that are shaded the same color. So I've got two times three. Okay, that's my front and back. Top and bottom. What would my top and bottom look like? How many squares can I see on the top and bottom? Four, good. So two squares and then two more squares. Okay, so two squares and I have four. Two sides times four. And the right and left side, how many do you see shaded dark, dark, dark? Two, good. So we need to show two squares, so two times two. Now we've got to do the multiplying. Let's finish the question. So 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. So another 18 centimeters squared. So all they did was they shifted them a little bit. All right. Now we're going to switch gears, and we're going to put objects on top of each other. So now we're going to take a look at a different section. They've got it stacked differently. So they've stacked it up differently. So what does our front and back look like? Well, we've got three on the bottom and three going up. So that's what our front and back looks like. So front and back is equal to two sides times five squares that I can see. Top and bottom. Two sides, and how many can I see on the top and bottom? How many are bright white? Three. So you should have three squares on your top and bottom. And right and left. Right and left. 
So right and left, how many dark squares can you see? Three. Three. And this one, this time they're vertical. Okay? So we see three squares there. Two times five is ten. Two times three is six. To give us a total of 22 centimeters squared. All right. Give you a minute to finish that. Okay, now we're going to talk about composite 3D objects. When we have a composite 3D object, it is different because when we stack objects together, we are now going to have a spot where they're glued together. We call this spot where they're glued together the overlap. So if I were to take a look, right now I'm holding a box and a Kleenex box. If I were to put my Kleenex box on top of the box, we were noticing that they're, if they were to be glued like this, right? Now, what if I wanted to make it into a tower? And if the bottom part was the first floor and this was the tower elevator, they'd have to get up and down in here somewhere, wouldn't they? Well, that means I would have to cut a hole in the bottom of the Kleenex box and I'd have to, have to cut a hole in the top of this one. Well, that's called the double, double overlap, okay? It's called an overlap because that's where they're glued together and touching. And we would have to not consider those parts as area. Because they're touching and glued together, they're actually considered to be added twice. So what we have to do is we have to subtract the double overlap so that we don't add it twice. Okay? So that's what we have to do when we've got composite objects. And that's what it's talking about here. It says the surface area is the area of all the faces that will be covered in paint. So if I were to take this object and I dump the whole thing in paint, everything would be painted except for where they were glued together, okay? And that part where they were glued together, that would be called the double overlap, okay? That's what we're talking about. All right, now the double overlap part, because it's not covered in paint, it wouldn't be considered part of the surface area. Because remember, surface means just the outside, not what's covered in between. Okay? It would just be the outside of the object. All right, let's take a look at an actual example. So here's an example, and we're going to find the area of the whole object. Now, whenever we're finding a composite object, if it's a real-life object, we don't find the floor or the roof unless it tells us to. Okay? Now, especially if we were, for example, had a barn. We're not going to find the floor of the barn. We would only find the sides of the roof. Okay? Because usually they're a dirt floor. Now, in here, for these ones, it doesn't tell us that it's a real-life situation. It just says, here's a couple rectangles. We stuff them together. Rectangular prisms. So basically a couple Kleenex boxes, one's bigger than the other, and they stuck them together. So we have to find out everything that is actual, if we were to dip it in paint, what would be painted? That's what we're trying to figure out right now. So we're going to take each object separate, and then we're going to add them together at the end. So we've got the large object, and we've got the small object. So we're going to find the large object first. Okay, so... Surface area of the large object. Okay. We need to find the front, back, top, bottom, left, right. Two sides each. Length times width. I always put that on top so that we know we're multiplying length times width. And we will set up every situation like this. So I'm going to take my little cursor and I'm just going to clone all that so I don't have to write it again. So all of this is going to be together. We'll clone it. All right. We're going to use that for the bottom. All right. So the plan says we take the smaller prism, add it to the bigger prism, and we subtract or overlap. So that's exactly right. So we're going to do the large object on top, and we're going to do the small object here on the bottom. Okay, so the numbers for the large object. If I were to look at the front and back, this is my front of my large object. Okay? Well, I need to know the dimensions of that front. Well, it's the same as the back. So how long is this side right here? That will be a length of 12. Okay? 
How tall is this side right here? Be the same height as this. How tall is it? Six. So we've got a 12 by six for the front and the back. The top and the bottom. Let's take a look at the top and the bottom. I'm going to shade them in green. So the top is right here, shaded in green. So 12 by, how big is this side right here? Same as the bottom one over here, six. So another 12 by six. Okay, now we're gonna look at the left and right side. I'm gonna shade that in blue. That's this little corner piece right there. So how big is my corner? Six by six, it's a square. All right, now we have to multiply all those numbers. Please write it out. And then we're going to do all the multiplying together. I'm just going to move these guys over. Whoa, and do what I just did. Just lock this guy down. I want all of that. Just going to move it over. Okay. and the back. Should give us 144, 144, and 72. For a grand total of how big? 360. 360. Good. So we have 360 for the large object. Now we need to do the small object. So this is going to be surface area of the small one. All right, let's put our dimensions for the small one on. So front and back is red. So front and back, how big are my sides for front and back? Six and three. And let's take a look at our, so that's going to give us 36. Now we need to look at the top and the bottom, the green part. So top and bottom. That's what I'm shading in green right here. So that's going to be 6 by 6. So going to 72. And the next one is this little side right here in blue, which is going to be 3 and 6. 6 and 3. So give us another 36. We add them all up. We are going to get 144. Now we have to consider where they are attached. What side are they attached by? The red side, the blue side, or the green side? The red one. So if you look at this small object right here, I'm going to highlight it right now. This red one that I'm circling right there in yellow, that red one there is the one that's behind that we can't see. So that's considered the double overlap. So our red side, okay, this red side, that's our double overlap. So we have to take two times length times width. Well, what's the length of the side? Six, and the width of the side, three. So six times three is 18, times two is 36. So the part we have to subtract is 36. So now we have to do what the plan says. Take the small one, add it to the big one, and subtract two times our overlap. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take, and I'm just going to highlight them right now in green. We're going to take 360, and we're going to add it to 144. And then we have to subtract 36. So it's going to look like this. Total surface area. 144 plus 360 subtract 36 equals 468 centimeters square. Is it meters? Thank you. Meters squared. Perfect. Okay, any questions about that? Okay. Okay, the reason we do two times the overlap is the same reason as this one. Remember, if I glue it here and I want to cut a hole in it, you can do this one and where it's glued here. Okay? So you have to have a double overlap. 
Okay. Now, what if they give you the surface areas? How do you find the total surface area of both objects? Um, I want to take a gander and say that you have to divide it by some divided by some. Okay. Why would you say divide? So if you're trying to find the size of something, divided by how many sides there is, so they're all equal. Okay, I see what you're talking about if it was perimeter. Yes. Okay. For the concept of perimeter, you are correct. We are talking surface area. So, the surface area, they've done the hard part for us in these questions. That is the good part about these two questions. They figured out the front, back, left, right, top, bottom for both objects. They did the hard part. All we have to do is object one plus object two minus the overlap. That's all we've got to do. So they've told us the size of what it's sitting on on purpose because we have to subtract two times that rectangle it's sitting on. So our overlap, we now have to um, create. So it's two times length times width. What's our length and width of this overlap? One and three. So one and three. And I put the two here because remember, it's two times the overlap. There's two objects that are stuck together. Okay. So what is two times one times three? Six. So we're going to take surface area of one is 40 centimeters squared. Plus, object 2 is 70 centimeters squared, minus our overlap of 6 centimeters squared. So we're going to take 40 plus 70, subtract our overlap. So we've got 110, subtract 6, is how big? 104, good. So we have 104 centimeters squared for total area. So we like these questions. They've done the hard work for us. We don't have to do all that front back nonsense. All we've got to do is add the surface areas and subtract the overlap. Same thing. This one, though, is two cubes. They told us the size. Now, how is a cube a little bit easier? How come? That's right. They're all the same size. Okay, so every size the same size, so if they're the same size, you only need to figure out six sides times the side squared. That's what surface area of a cube is. Okay? Now, if you don't like this nonsense about side squared, just think length times width. They just so happen to be the same number. Okay? So it would be six times length times width. You can do that if you want. So, on this question... For the big object, we're going to have 6 as the length and width are both 6. So we're going to have 6 times 6 times 6 in this case, which is 216. So we have the large object is 216. Now we got to figure out the small object. So the small object, we're going to use the same steps. 6 sides times length times width. Now length and width are the same number here, 2 and 2. So 6 times 2 times 2 is 24. Now we have to do the overlap. So here's my overlap piece. The overlap piece is a square, and there's two of them. So I'm going to put the overlap here in red. Overlap equals two sides times 2 times 2, length and width, which gives us 8. So, the overlap is 8, but we have to subtract. The total surface area is going to be the large object plus the small object minus the double overlap. So, we're going to get 216 plus 24 subtract 8. And that's going to give us our total surface area for that one, which is 232 centimeters squared. Now, the next one we have let's 
take a look and see, is a loading dock. Now the loading dock question, this one, we need to paint the loading dock. So, take a look. So the loading dock is attached to one uh, wall of a warehouse. The exterior of the buildings are to be painted at a cost. So is are, pardon me, um, to be painted at a cost of two dollars fifty cents per meter square. That's pretty cheap, actually. So how much is it going to cost to paint to paint both of the buildings together? So we have to find both of them together. Now again. Because it is a real life object, are we going to find the floor? No, we're not painting the floor. Are we painting the ceiling? No, we're not painting the ceiling. So all we're painting is all of them, and it's the outside. So it's just going to be all of the walls on the outside. That's all we have to um, calculate, okay? So we're going to have a front back. Are we going to have a top bottom? No, we're just going to have a front back, left, right. So. We're going to have the large object and the small object. So we're going to go the large object first here. So we're going to have a front and a back and a left and a right. So remember, we don't have a top bottom for the painting. So two sides times length times width. Two sides times length times width. Okay, we're going to do that for both objects, the large one and the small one. small object down here. Okay, front and back. So here is our front they're showing us. So of our large object, what are my dimensions of that? So we have 20 right here. That means this is 20 and that is 20 on the bottom. So our length and width, it's a square, 20 by 20 for the front and back. 20 by 20. The next one the left and the right side. We need the left and the right side. So that's this one like this. That's this part right here. So it's going to be 30. And how high is this side right here? What does it say right there? 20. So it's going to be 30 by 20. Now we're going to do our multiplying. 2 times 20 times 20. It's going to give us 800. 2 times 30 times 20 is going to give us 1,200. And that's going to give us a total of 2,000. In the answer key book, they did the top as well, but we're not doing the top. Okay. So 2,000 for the large one. Now we need to do the small object. So, small objects, we need to do the front and back. That's this piece right here. So, it's going to be 30 by, how big is, how's the height? 10, good. So, 30 by 10. And that's going to give us 600. The left and right side, that's this little green side right here. And that's going to give us 20 by 10. And that's going to give, it, give us a total of 400. If we add those together, we get a total of 1,000. So, so far, if we add them together, we're going to get 3,000. Are we done? No. What did we forget? Oh, just a The overlap. We need the overlap. Now, take a look, everybody. Is it safe to say that the side they're attached by is the other guy's side of this over here? Yeah, that's the side they're attached by. So that means this left and right side here, both of these, that's the amount we're going to be subtracting. So this is actually the amount of our double overlap. So this is also the double overlap. So really, we've got 2,000 plus 1,000 subtract 400. Or if you've already realized another way to do the question, is if you already knew that that was going to be the part you had to subtract, you didn't have to figure it out to begin with sometimes. If you find that easier, that's okay. So all you would have to figure out on this one would be the front. 
okay? So you would have had 2,000 plus 600. And that's going to be our final answer, 2,600, okay? Because it's going to be 2,000 plus 1,000 is 3,000, okay? So let me write this up here so that everybody can see. So, so yeah, 2,000 plus 1,000, subtract the overlap. And that's going to give us 2,600. Now, it says, um, will the bottoms of the buildings be painted? Why or why not? Will they be painted? No, they won't. But we didn't uh, find out. No, they will not. We have to find out the cost. We haven't found the cost yet. It says it's going to cost $2.50 per meter square. Well, that means we're going to take our 2600 and times it by 2.5. And that's going to give us how much it costs to actually paint. What does it cost? 6500 Exactly. Okay. So it's going to cost $6,500 to paint that warehouse. Okay. Painting is not cheap. This is one of the things that is a realistic thing. Only paint is much more expensive. It would be more like 4.5. Okay. Per meter square. It just is. It's not an easy job. All right. That concludes the end of 8.2, surface area of 3D objects.